designed to be waterlogged. It just takes one hurricane to hit New York. Buildings are going to start to get taken out. And it wasn't just the city. Our whole way of life had crumbled. But I found my daughter, Molly, and Daniel, my grandson. He was a young man now. Molly's husband, George, had been killed. Both of us were widows now. It is a hard life. The United States is fragmented into a million shards. We're all cut off from each other, each protecting what little we have. It would be a wrenching transition. It would be a catastrophic transition. It's something we don't want to experience. The Dark Ages were called the Dark Ages for a reason. I fear that we'll see a world like medieval Europe, where you have feudal states fighting for what remains of a source of water, a source of energy. We manage to produce our own power and communicate over radio waves. The cities that have endured are now walled fortresses, jealously guarding whatever remains of the computer age. I'm picturing enclaves of affluence and wealth, but surrounded by vast masses of people who will be barely surviving. In effect, humanity could very well be in hell, where hell is defined as truth realized too late. We have had to relearn what we had unlearned centuries before. How to live off the land, how to make do. I think we'll see a world in which literature, the arts, democracy, those will disappear, largely disappear. How much of the wonderful scientific breakthroughs of the 20th and 21st century will still be retained? If it's some electronic-based thing, it could all be lost. My grandson Daniel might never hear a symphony, go to college, or read the books I read. He will never marvel at a right whale, the beauty of a coral reef, or a spotted owl. If you actually ever get outside and just kind of look at the wonder of the world, it's, uh, it takes your breath away, and I think to think of a world where somehow that is taken away is really sad. We're gonna leave a planet that is so desperately beaten up that it will probably take hundreds of thousands of years to get it back, to restore it. We will have lost so much of our, of our natural heritage. I can teach him poems and songs. I can tell him what I saw and what I learned along the way. I can try to tell him what is precious. What is precious? I ought to know that. They say I am the oldest woman on earth. With age is supposed to come wisdom. What is precious? This earth of ours. This garden we must tend. These people we love. Our future is not yet written. The ending to our story can still be changed that when we come back.
Lucy story is a worst case scenario of what could happen if we continue on our current path. It's a wake up call, a challenge for us to plan a different course. But our experts say we must act immediately. Where did Lucy's world go wrong? What can we learn from their mistakes? We turn back the clock now to show you a vision of a future we can still create. There's a future out there that's a much better future than uh, the present that we're living in right now, to be sure. If we took the measures we should take, 2100 would be at the beginning of an era that we today would regard as paradise. We have a chance to get it right, to move from a disconnected, inefficient world of fighting populations to a sustainable planet. The problem we face today is how do we get from here to there? The world that Lucy was born into is our world today. There are plenty of signs that it's in trouble, but there are hopeful signs as well. The problems that we face, water, soil, climate change, they're all problems caused by humans, so we're capable of solving those problems. It could be overwhelming if we let it. I just try to take it one brick, one chunk at a time. I think that's how you have to deal with it. So what should we do right now to chart another course? How do we avoid ending up in Lucy's world? Many experts say the first step should be transforming how we use energy. Much of what we need to do, we already know. Plant the garden. Use compact fluorescent bulbs or mass transit for people. Insulate your homes, smaller cars. There is no simple solution, but 100% of the Earth's population doing a very small thing makes a very big difference. But individuals alone won't be able to turn things around. Governments and industries are going to have to change on a massive scale. We're going to have to come up with more solar, more wave power, more geothermal energy. Beyond the familiar technologies, amazing new ones are already in the works. Fields of solar balloons that could power thousands of homes a day, a nuclear fusion facility that could produce the energy of a tiny man-made star. We can't drill and burn our way out of our problems, but we can invent and invest our way out. Getting enough of these projects up and running will take people, and that means jobs. And if we can put more people back to work, then by 2015, instead of communities disintegrating, they could start to rebound. You can fight pollution and poverty at the same time. You can beat global warming and the economic downturn with the same dollar bill if you invested in green jobs, green energy, green technologies. If we start those investments today, there wouldn't be gas lines and fights as in Lucy's world. Instead, there would be electric cars that could run 300 miles per charge. But completely redesigning our energy system would require rapid change. It would mean both sacrifice and hard work for the whole country. But we have done it before. The thing I would compare it to is World War II. After Pearl Harbor, FDR, uh, turned to Detroit, the automakers, and said, you will now make uh, tanks. Um, you will now make Jeeps. Uh, just like that. That was like overnight almost. And they did it. And we won that war. It's going to take that same level of commitment. Imagine that all of us did enough things that it made a real difference in our country. What effect does that have on China, on India, on other nations? Well, if we don't set an example as the strongest and most important country in the world, what do we expect them to do? They're not going to follow if we don't lead. World leaders are gathering in Washington, D.C. to attend an emergency global summit meeting. A turning point in Lucy's world was the global summit of 2015. When the world leaders failed to agree on actions to slow climate change, we do not accept the offer. They set in motion all the disasters that would follow. But what if they had agreed? For the first time ever, China, India, the US, and Europe have reached an agreement that could avert catastrophic climate change. By tackling climate change, you end up tackling energy, you end up tackling food,